Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to Caring Medical Florida here in Fort Myers. There's many people that have the gradual onset of symptoms, like not everybody gets in a car accident, then they get migraines, dizziness, da da da. A lot of people's histories is of gradual onset. This particular patient is middle-aged. Uh, she's one of my many Ehlers-Danlos syndrome patients and her symptoms gradually came on. And over the course of years, She's seen so many doctors, gastroenterologists, ENT, neurologists, pain doctors. She's had the gradual onset of ringing in the ears, tinnitus, migraines, fainting spells, loss of balance, speech issues, voice issues. And interesting to me is gastroesophageal reflux and other digestive conditions. So on the initial assessment, we did a digital motion x-ray and her digital motion x-ray brings up a lot of interesting points. One point is that you see here that the disc heights at C2, C, C2, C3, C3, C4, C4, C5 are completely normal. Then you see right here, you see how there's almost no disc and there's an offset here. So in other words, her C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or C5 vertebrae is posterior, and we're gonna see this bone spur that's gonna start narrowing the spinal space here. So in essence, she's had a lot, a lot of instability at C5, C6, and the body has tried its best to try to stabilize that area. If I would have seen her when her symptoms first started. She probably just would have needed one, two, three visits of prolotherapy. And then none of this would, would have occurred. And you'll see the significance of this as she, we do her digital motion x-ray. So if we could start that. And you'll see right here, you'll see definitely instability there. Okay, so we'll stop it at the end here. So the back of the vertebrae here is called George's line. So what we're trying to see is George's line, is it continual or is there a break in George's line? That one vertebrae went forward on another, which means that the ligaments back here are lax. So if we go here at C2, C3, see how there's a space there, C3, C4 space there, C4, C5, a space there. So she has multi-level instability at C2, C3, C3, C4, C4, C5. And then, C, so at C5, C6, there's no instability there because she has these bone spurs here. That's what, that's, that's what that is. So now we're gonna see on her extension view that this bone spur starts narrowing this space. This space, this space right here is the spinal canal space that has the spinal cord. When that space gets narrowed less than one centimeter or 10 millimeters, they call that cervical spinal uh, stenosis. So that's what spinal stenosis is, the canal space is narrowed. This canal space can get narrowed because of ligament laxity allowing too much motion, or it can be because there's a bone spur there. In her case, it's both, so watch this. Watch this, we're gonna watch the bone spurs there. Okay, next, like watch that. See right here, watch this as she goes back. See how it's going, see how it's moving right there, right there, stop. Okay, so in other words, if we looked at right here, that's the spinal canal space, but because of the bone spur, it, it's, it's here. So the space is narrowed basically that amount of distance. So it's that distance there. It's this amount of distance the spinal canal space is narrowed. I can see the bone spur right here. So on her MRI, on her MRI, she had a disc osteophyte complex there. And as I said to her that on the initial visit, a lot, a lot of symptoms we can get better. A lot, a lot of symptoms that we can get better. And most, mostly I think we're going to get, we're gonna get all of her symptoms better. But I said, and I'll just call her name Mary. I'm like, Mary, I'm just telling you, if you were me or you were my wife, and I know that's a horrible thought to think about, but if, if you were, I'd say, you know, you got a big bone spur there and it's, it looks pretty sharp. 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't if I were you be going on roller coasters, I wouldn't be doing the skidoo. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, so, so that's really helpful. You know, that's really, really helpful. That's really, really helpful. The, um, and I said to her, the, the spinal cord here, this is the part of the spinal cord that affects the legs. So I said, if this is causing a problem, like you're walking along and all of a sudden you notice, geez, like my legs feel heavy. So I said, if you ever start feeling that, and she doesn't have that symptom now, I said, then, you know, you got to start thinking it's actually that bone spur. And there is a place for decompressive surgery. You know, there is a place for decompressive surgery. So, you know, I use digital motion x-ray absolutely to document uh, spinal instability and make sure the person's a good candidate for prolotherapy. But we get all kinds of information, including if there's bone spurs that we, we have to be concerned about with or at least let the person know in the future. And I, I won't show the rest of the, her digital motion x-ray, but she had on her left side, she had total compression of the C6 nerve root. So that was, that was explaining the numbness that she would have uh, in her uh, left arm, and that absolutely should get better with prolotherapy. So this person's, her symptoms, including her gastroesophageal reflux and her digestive symptoms, which I believe are from uh, the vagus nerve not working right because of the uh, instability she has, those symptoms should get better. Her migraine headaches, her clicking, grinding, crunching, her terrible neck tension, neck pain, her fainting spells, her balance issues, and she has horrible brain fog, fatigue, all those things I believe are gonna get better with prolotherapy.